Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L and M Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> Train's already in, Mr. Dillon. Ah, good. But I thought we was early. Well, now we won't have to wait so long for the mail to be sorted, Chester. Hey, ain't that Miss Kitty? Oh, no, where? Over yonder, talking to that big fellow. Yeah, that looks like Hank Grote. Oh, now, what would she be doing with a man like him? He ain't fit for a hog pen. Uh, you go get the mail, Chester. All right, sir. Take your hand off her. What? Oh. What are you nosing in for, Marshal? You're lucky he is. I was about to jab this parasol in your eye. Yeah, it'd be just like one of your kind. Get out of here, Grote. Go on before I kill you. You mean it, don't you? You would kill me. It's a good thing you're wearing a gun, Marshal. And you better go on wearing it, too. I'm sorry I got you into this, Matt. No, you didn't get me into it, Kitty. Besides, I don't think there's a man in Dodge that wouldn't appreciate a chance to put a hole in Hank Groot. Well, the sooner the better. Hey, who's the girl with Chester? Huh? Well, I don't know. I never saw her before. Pretty little thing, isn't she? Yeah, she sure is. Well, hello, Miss Kitty. Hello, Chester. Uh... This here is Ann Cabot. How do you do, Ann? How do you do, Kitty? And this is the man you're looking for. This is Marshal Dillon. Hello, Marshal. Ah, oh, it's a pleasure, Miss Cabot. Ann, please. <laughs> All right. Uh, Chester says you were looking for me. I think so. As the U.S. Marshal in Dodge, you seem the logical person to help me. Well, I'll be glad to help you if I can. I've come from Connecticut, Marshal. Oh? I'm looking for Jack Schomer. Jack Schomer? You know him? Well, I... Uh, wait a minute, Chester. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we know him, man. He's here. Well, uh, no, not at the moment. He, uh, had to ride up north somewhere. Oh. But he'll be back. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I think so. Uh, look, I'll tell you what, Ann. Uh, I'll try to get word to him that you're here. I, I think I can do that. Oh, thank you, Marshal, but... Well, he's not expecting me. Maybe I'd just better wait. It, it might upset him otherwise. Well, sure. Why don't you do that? You got a place to stay? No, I haven't. Well, there's an extra room over where I live. Is there? Well, I work at the Long Branch, and It's a saloon on Front Street. Oh. But the rooms aren't too close. Quiet there. Nobody will bother you. Thank you, Kitty. Well, come on, then. We'll find somebody to carry your things over. I think Matt and Chester are going to be busy. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we are. Uh, Goodbye, Miss Cabot. Goodbye, Ann. Goodbye. I'll talk to you later, Matt. Okay. It's not very far. You can walk from one end of this town to the other in about five minutes. Oh, my goodness, Mr. Dillon. Jack Schomer. Ah, let's go find him, Chester. That poor girl. We'll take Doc with us. 
Maybe he can do something. This is it, l and Filters. It stands out from all the rest. Miracle tip, much more flavor. l and has got everything. It's the best. l and is best. Stands out from all the rest. l and has got everything. Everything? Everything. Best flavor? l and stands out for flavor. The Miracle Tip draws easy. Let you enjoy all the taste. Best filter? L&M stands out for effective filtration. No filter compares with L&M's pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. Best tobaccos? Highest quality tobaccos. Low nicotine tobaccos. L&M tobaccos. Light and mild. Every way, L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. How easy they draw. How mild they are. L&M is sweeping the country. It's America's best filter tip cigarette. looking shack I ever saw, Matt. I don't know how even a man like Jack Schumer can live in there. Well, he doesn't care much how he lives, Doc. Well, at least he's got water handy. What with the whole Arkansas River running right past his door. Uh, what would Schumer use water for, Chester? Oh, to wash, maybe. <laughs> wash him? Now the door's open. Uh, Schumer! Hey, Schaumer, it's Marshal Dillon. What are you doing here, Marshal? Yeah. All right, let's go inside. Doc, Chester, I better get up. Now, you don't have to get up. Just sit back on the bed. Um, maybe, maybe. How are you feeling, Schaumer? I got the shakes, Doc. Bad. Oh, well, we'll fix that. Well, what are you doing here? I don't understand. Don't worry about it, Shummer. We'll explain it to you when your head's clear. Yeah. Well, what do we do first, Doc? Take this jug of corn outside and smash it. Oh. Here you are, Chester. You can do no, that. no, what, what are you doing? Now, now, never mind. It, it, it ain't very you cold. You can't Schumer. do that. That's my liquor. I'm going to get a pot of coffee going, Matt, while I'm doing that. You and Chester take him down to the river. Down to the river? They're going to throw you in and let you soak a while, oh, Shomer. No, no, I'll drown. Don't worry, Shomer. We'll put a rope on you. All right, come on. Let's get it done. <laughs> some more coffee, Schumer. Oh, I've been drinking coffee all day long, Doc. I must have had a barrel of it. It's whiskey that comes in barrels, Schumer. Drink your coffee. Uh, I'm floating. Uh, Schumer, you're pretty sober now. So what are you going to do? I can't face her, Marshal. I'd give anything to see her, but I can't do it. I'm no good for her the way I am now. What happened to you, Schumer? What went wrong? The land. The land went wrong. I went wrong on it. I don't know. Anyway, it beat me, Doc. I was going to start a homestead and then send for Ann, but I... I couldn't make it. I had to give up, I... 
I even quit writing to her about a year ago. You're not the first man this country broke. Uh, it, it's more than that, Marshal. Most men who quit find something else to do, but with me, it's like I lost everything. I couldn't face people anymore. Then that night I got into a fight at the Long Branch. You heard about that. Yeah, I heard. I ran away. Couldn't stand up to him. I guess I'm a coward. Everybody says I am. Every man's been a coward at one time or another, Schumer. But it doesn't have to last. It's lasted with me. How could I face Anne knowing I'm a failure and a coward to bully? Well, you can prove you're not a coward just by going to see her. Try it. Women have a way of understanding these things. Well, I... I don't know, Doc. All right, Schumer. We'll tell her you're in the horse trading business. That's why you're out of town. But you'll have to tell her the truth. If you see her. I'm only half a man. I... Well, it's up to you. You think on it. But don't take too long. <laughs> least it's not as wild as I expected. I keep telling her the real troublemakers don't even get up till sundown. <laughs> <laughs> don't let her scare you. I don't worry about Anne. She doesn't scare easy. Marshal, you haven't heard anything about Jack when he'll be back. Well, uh, Jack Schomer's a busy man, Anne. He, he's up north somewhere, like I said. He trades horses, you know. No, I didn't. Uh, he'll, he'll probably be back in a oh, day or so. I can wait. I'm used to waiting. It won't be long, Anne. No. Oh, Kitty, look. Hmm? Are those the kind of bonnets you were telling me about in the window over there? Ah, those are the ones. If Mr. Jonas doesn't have them marked up too high. Well, there's some price tags on them. Excuse me. Where is Shomer, Ma? Yeah, we sobered him up. He's doing some thinking now. Sitting in that shack of his? Yeah. Kitty, hmm? they're all a dollar and a half. Is that too high? No, that's fair. We'll go in and try one on you in a minute. Oh, good. I wish Shomer would hurry up, Matt. I hate playing this kind of game with a girl like that. Yeah, I know. Hey, I ain't seen you in Dodd before. No, you haven't. Matt. My name is Hank Root. What's yours? Stay here, Kitty. Uh -huh. I'm not accustomed to meeting men this way, sir. Oh, now, don't get like that. Groat. I ain't doing nothing, Marshal. I'm only talking to the lady. You leave the ladies alone, Groat. All of them. And if I have any more trouble with you, I'm going to run you out of Dodge for good. Now get moving. You want them all for yourself, huh? Well, it ain't going to be that way. You will see. Thank you, Marshal. <laughs> I'm afraid they're not all gentlemen out here, Ann. When are you going to get around to shooting him, Matt? If I'm going to stay out here, I guess I'll have to learn to handle men like that. Well, you won't run into anybody worse than Hank Grota. No, and if he bothers you again, Ann, you let me know right away. Huh? I certainly will, Marshal. Okay. Now you two go buy your bonnets, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Marshal. Goodbye, Matt. Hey, goodbye. <laughs> Cracked lids, wobbly doggone legs, rusty chimbly otherwise. It's working something wonderful. You know something, Mr. Dillon? Oh, uh, what, Chester? Next year, we're just going to have to find another stove. This one's about wore out. We can't afford a new one, Chester. Well, what about one of them hay burners? They're cheap. 
It takes two men and a boy to keep a hay burning stove going, you know. Uh, I know, but it. Well, Miss Kitty. Hello, Chester. Matt. Well, what's the matter, Kitty? I can't find Anne. What? We had dinner at Delmonico's tonight, and then I had to go to work. Anne was going back to her room to do some sewing and things, but she isn't there. I don't know where she is. Well, how do you know? Have you been there? I broke a heel off my shoe, and I went over to get a different pair. I stopped by her room, and she's not there. That isn't like her, Matt. Well, you go back to work, Kitty. We'll look for her. Come on, Chester. You better find her. Yeah, we'll find her. Let me know, Matt, will you? Sure, of course I will, Kitty. Where are we going to look, Mr. Dillon? Uh, we'll go to the house first, Chester. That's where she was headed. Kitty's awful upset, ain't she? Yeah. Kitty takes a liking to somebody. She's kind of a tiger about him. Yes, sir, that sure is true. Well, I hope nothing's happened to Ann. Maybe she only went for a walk or something. Yeah, maybe. But a woman shouldn't go for a walk at night. Alone, should she? No. She might get lost or something. Yeah. Ought to stay indoors at night. Unless she's with somebody. That's right, Justin. It's too dangerous in a place like Dodge. You don't never know what might happen, do you? No. Well, Hold I... up a minute, Chester. Well, I don't see nothing. On the ground over there, just out of that patch of moonlight. Oh, my. Oh, my goodness. It's Ann Cabot. She's been hurt or something. Yeah. Ann... Hey, Ann. Yeah, she's unconscious, Chester. What happened to her? I don't know. I'm going to carry her up to docks. You go tell Kitty, huh? Yes, sir. I've got L and M. I've got L and M. I've got L and M. And L and M's got everything. Best filter. No filter compares with L and M's pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. Best flavor. The miracle tip draws easy, lets you enjoy all the taste. Best tobaccos. Highest quality tobaccos. Low nicotine tobaccos. L and M tobaccos. Light and mild. Today, buy L and M. It's sweeping the country because it's America's best filter tip cigarette. Yes, today. Why don't you get L and M? Because L and M's got everything. This is it. L and M filters. L and M's got everything. It's the best. Anne was still unconscious when I got her up to docks. And she stayed that way. He examined her, but he couldn't find anything wrong. There wasn't a scratch on her. Her hair was mussed up some, but we figured that happened when she fell. Kitty and Doc spent the night watching her and waiting. But at noon the next day, Anne was still unconscious. And there didn't seem to be a thing anybody could do about it. Chester and I stayed out of the way and did our waiting downstairs in the office. I've heard tell of people going to sleep and staying that way practically forever, Mr. Dillon. You think that's what she's got? Uh, whoever heard of sleeping sickness around here, Chester? Well, maybe she caught it back east and brought it with her. Well, I don't know about back east. Marshal? Well, what do you know? Well, come on in. It's no use, Marshal. What? I came to tell you I can't do it. Oh? I'm going to go away. 
Maybe you can tell her I got killed or something. No, I haven't been drinking. Not a drop since you and Doc and Chester came down there. Show me there's something. Pat, I wanted to tell you that... Yeah, what is it, Doc? Well, Jack Schumer. Hello, Doc. It's a good thing you're here, Schumer. What? He doesn't know about her yet, Doc. Oh, no, what? We found Ann lying unconscious on the street last night, and she's been that way ever since. She came to a few minutes ago, Matt. Oh? Did she say anything? Yes. It seems Hank Groat stopped her and tried to talk to her. She slapped him, made him so mad he hit her. Well, uh, he must have done it with the flat of his hand. But it gave her a concussion. He's a mighty powerful man. Hank Groat hit Ann. I'll go get him, Doc. Oh, wait a minute, and I'll go with you, Mr. Dillon. I just want to lock the door out back here. All right. I saw Groat going into the Texas Trail next door. Oh, good. I'm going back to Ann. She's in bad shape. Yeah, Doc. Mr. Dillon, can you give me a hand out here? Yeah, I'm coming, Chester. Because the door is warped, Mr. Dillon. You'll have to shove onto it so I can get it locked. Okay. Yeah. There it is. Thank God. You know, we're going to have to build a new door one of these days. That one sure ain't much. Hey, where'd Schomer go? I don't know. Mr. Dillon, my gun's gone. What? My six gun. It was on the cot here just a minute ago. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Uh, Shomer must have taken it. Him? What for? To go after Hank Grote with. Come on. Are you serious, Mr. Dillon? Well, it's a cinch doc that didn't take your gun. Oh, no, of course not. But the idea of Shomer going after Hank Grote. He saw him going to the Texas Trail here. And this is the last place I'd look for Shomer. Well, maybe. There he is. Talking to Grote over there at the bar. That gun in your belt don't scare me, Shomer. You're a coward. Everybody knows it. Maybe I've been a coward long enough. Wait a minute, Chester. I'm not carrying a gun. That proves you're a coward, Shomer. I'll get rid of the gun. I'll slide it down the bar. Now will you fight? <laughs> you were a fool to do that. I'll kill you now. I'll kill you with my bare hands. Come on, I'm not afraid. All right, hold it. Now you stay out of this, Marshal. It's my fight. Not anymore, Schomer. Groat's under arrest. He's my prisoner. What are you talking about? And are you coming, Groat? Yeah. I'm coming. My goodness, Mr. Dillon, you ruin your six-gun using it that way. Here, take it, Chester. When Grote comes to, bring him to jail, huh? We'll be up to docks. I think Schomer's ready to talk to Ann now. <laughs> She's in the back room there. I've got to see her. Wait a minute. What? You're too late. Too late? Anne died a couple of minutes ago. No. She asked about you. She wanted to see you. I think she knew something was wrong. We didn't fool her.
I should have come here first. Instead of going after Groat. Maybe. Might have helped. I didn't prove anything, did I? What do you mean? I wanted Groat to kill me, Marshal. Don't you understand? That way I'd never have to tell him the truth about me. It was her I couldn't face. Where are you going, Schumer? Where do you think, Doc? I'm going to get a drink. Well, Matt? We tried, Doc. It just wasn't there. <laughs> And now our star, William Conrad. Thank you, George. Mild and plenty quick on the draw. That's L&M for you. And the pure white miracle tip on the business end of every L&M filters out everything but the taste of the world's finest tobaccos. All you have to do is pick up a carton of L&M's and you'll see what I mean. L&M stands out from all the rest. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were Eleanor Tannen, Harry Bartell, and Barney Phillips. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Our thanks to TV Radio Mirror and to you, our listening audience, for selecting Gunsmoke, the favorite mystery adventure program of the year. The results of this audience annual poll appears in the current issue of TV Radio Mirror. Stop! Start smoking with a smile with Chesterfield. Smiling all the while with Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield, they satisfy. Put a smile in your smoking by Chesterfield. So smooth, so satisfying. Chesterfield. This is Alan Edwards speaking, and I hope you'll be with us when Ellen M. Filters brings you a new form of dramatic TV journalism. Mr. Citizen, I'm the host, but you are the star. It's your program because it's the true story of you or your neighbor at a time of crisis, emergency, or inspiration.